Hello and welcome to our presentation. The heart of our design is the mechanical distance measuring system. At our virtual original finals, we proposed using a cassette tape that would unwind as the car went forwards and wound back on its return. Unfortunately, after conducting physical testing on this idea, we found out that it was unpractical and overcomplicated. We therefore moved to a lead screw design, as you can see, by preventing its rotation, a nut moves along the axle as the car moves forward. When the car changes direction, the lead nut travels the other way until it reaches its starting position, at which point it pushes a button which switches off the motor. The vehicle changes direction on the wall by using the impact to move a DPDT switch. This changes the circuit that is connected to the power supply which reverses the polarity of the motor, moving the car in the other direction. The off switch that cuts the power at the end of the run is only connected to the second circuit, allowing the car to start with the switch in the off position. This means that no offsets are required to make it function properly. An initial step was the creation of a vehicle dynamics model in MATLAB. This allowed us to find the optimal vehicle mass, motor and gear ratio. We were also able to check that our car would finish within 2 minute time limit. Using a simulation model accelerated our development process as it helped us avoid lengthy physical proof of concept testing and allowed us to focus on refining our design. We also used the MATLAB model to study the impact of the vehicle with the wall. We wanted to prevent the car from skidding on impact, which would misalign it, causing it to miss the target. We used hand calculations to define the problem and understand what we had to model. In MATLAB, we could then test various factors such as the speed of the vehicle, the stiffness of the springs and our shock absorber, and the maximum displacement of the shock absorber to find the best solution. There was a concern that the momentum of the car would cause it to skid and overshoot the target point after the motor had been switched off. To mitigate this, we looked to save weight when possible. However, there were some parts of the design where we had to balance the positives and negatives of weight saving. An example of this is the chassis, where we use generative design to reduce its mass without sacrificing stiffness. Through this, we reduce the mass of the chassis by 18%. Generative design utilizes finite element analysis to identify areas which can be removed whilst causing minimal structural disruption. The manufacturing method was also inputted as a consideration into the Fusion 360 simulation so that the design would be suitable to manufacture by laser cutting. The angle of the rear axle can be adjusted to allow for the steering to be trimmed. If the axle were fixed, possible errors would cause the alignment between the axle to be untrue. We also ensured that the end float of the axles was accounted for, with grub screws holding the wheels and axles in place. We have used this full length available to us, reducing the distance the car travels on each run, increasing accuracy as error is proportional to distance travel. Over a one and a half meter run, the length increase you can see here reduces the error by 7%. Using smaller wheels means the axle must go through more revolution, causing the lead nut to travel further for the same distance moved by the vehicle. The further the lead nut travels, the smaller the error caused by any deviation in the final position of the nut. Decreasing the size of our wheels from 80mm to 50mm has led us to an increase in accuracy of 38%. Throughout the development process, cost was instrumental in deciding which areas should be prioritised and which should not. The total cost of our vehicle is £27. In this cost breakdown, you can see those significant expenditure on the lead screw into aluminium wheels, accounting for 40% of the total cost between them. However, we feel that these were worthwhile as they have significantly improved the performance of the vehicle. Areas we could have spent more on include additive manufacturing, and given the larger budget, we would have chosen to use selective laser sintered nylon for its increased accuracy. Creating a vehicle dynamics model was a helpful step for us as it saved us a lot of development time, which was especially useful as accessing our university workshop was harder due to COVID-19 restrictions. If we were to start a development process again, we would have built a car earlier as only once we assembled the first prototype and tested it physically did we realize that we had used a switch design that didn't work. We also then had less than two weeks to change it. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation and we look forward to your questions. Here's a short video of our car during testing.